All right, welcome to a quick vid just on what is on my Wahoo Element Bolt, what is on the screen and all the rest of that stuff. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so here we go. This is what I have on my Wahoo Element Bolt. Sorry about the background noise. Anyway, right, basically the what's on the top is the what I look at most of the time, the ride, time, then speed, distance, cadence, heart rate. I don't really use heart rate that much just because I always lose the belt, but anyway, it's there, and time just so I know what's going. This is the page that I have most of the time, has all the useful metrics. Um, mainly I'm just like, if I'm riding zone two, I'll just look at the power and figure out what's going on. Right, so then we have the next page, which I guess I just always flick through. So I love my average speed just to see, you know, see how the ride's going. Uh, temperature always interesting just to see I mean it's just a bit pointless but you know it's always nice seeing normal as power average power just lets me know how the rides going especially on endurance rides which end up I guess being quite a lot of them just making sure that you're in the right power zone battery I mean the battery you can actually if you click this button here on the side just where my thumb is uh, you can get the battery out there as well so about this um, but anyway so yeah the battery is useful and then time in zone which is power zone 2 which is you know on endurance ride, it's quite useful to figure out if you spend like, let's say, a three-hour ride, you want to try and spend two and a half hours, if possible. Well, you want to spend three hours in zone two, but you want to spend as much time as possible in zone two. So that's very useful. Right, next page, we have my interval page. So this is every time I'm doing interval that isn't zone two. So basically, anytime I'm doing, you know, efforts, sprints, um, anaerobic uh, capacity efforts, VO2 max efforts, tempo, anything like that, I'll be on this page here. It's got watts, so I know. How, like what power I'm doing, it's got the lap time and it's got the lap power. So that's pretty much everything that you need um, for your intervals. I used to have cadence on it, but I just found that it was pointless and I'd rather have that. So I basically just try and make sure that my watts are the same as my lap power and my lap power is what I've used. Sometimes I use the workout function, um, but I find that often it's very confusing and I'm the laps don't work perfectly. But if it's a very complicated workout, um, then I will use the lap function. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to show you that because I don't have any laps loaded on it. But it basically just takes you through and has like the goal power, your power. The only thing it doesn't have is the average power, which is a bit annoying for the lap, but it's not too bad. Uh, right, this is the page that just has all useless information. I'm just, if I'm just scrolling through, so that's my max speed, meters climb, TSS. Um, so that's basically how hard you've gone. Um, so 100 TSS is riding an hour full gas. Uh, maximum speed, calories burnt, maximum watts. My best 20 minute power and that's my best five minute power and obviously the temperature again. Um, I just like knowing like what my power has been for the ride. So if I know like let's say in a race, you might just click it 20 minute power. Oh, I did 300 watts for that or whatever. Um, or sometimes if you would like do a five minute max test, you can't bother to wait to get home. It tells you this. So that's ideal. And then I just like having the rest of them just, you know, have a little look if I get a bit bored on the ride, but I don't generally spend that much time. I'll just flick through and just check what is going on. Anyway, these are the segments. I don't like live segments very much, so I often just mute them. Uh, they're only really useful if you don't have a power meter. So maybe on a mountain bike, I'd use them more, but on a road bike, I have my power meter, so I know what, what I need to do. Um, and it can be a bit annoying. I, it's nice that when it pops up the end of the time, but the pages on this here is always not really very useful because it doesn't have the power on it, and that's what I really generally pace on. Uh, next we have, which is pretty useful, um, especially if you're climbing big climbs that you don't know, and it's the altitude. So it basically tells you along the bottom, it will have like a little thing that goes up. Let's say this is the bro the pr route profile. So if you have the route loaded on, you'll be able to see where you're going. Then you can think like, oh, you know, I'm almost at the top. So if you're doing it, let's say you're doing a segment effort that you don't actually know about. So I've done this, use, use this quite, it's quite useful before, but you're like, all right, am I near the top? Then you click on this page and you're like, all right, I'm just around the top. And then you can really, you know, give the beans or whatever. So I've got speed uh, and gradient. So that really, um, even if I'm not riding with power, you can then, you know, figure out. So if you're doing 16 k an hour and 10% gradient, you know, you're going decent if you're doing that for a long time. Uh, meters climbed, again, just useful. Elevation, so uh, maybe if I know how long the climb is, I know I've got the climbs maybe 2,000 meters up. Then if I'm at 1,800, I know how long I've got to go. The VAM, so that is basically um, how fast you're climbing. So it stands for Velocita Essenciale Media, which means average vertical ascent speed. So basically, it's measured in meters per hour. It's something pioneered by Dr. Ferrari, and Tour de France riders ride about 1,800 meters per hour, more or less, 1,600 to 1,800. So imagine a 1,600 meter climb, so let's say um, a climb which is 16 kilometers long at 10%, that will climb 1,600 meters, and they would be able to do that in an hour if they're going full gas. So it just allows me, like 1,000 is what you can climb up pretty easy, and for me, like 1,500, maybe, or 14, it depends on the, how steep the climb is, but 13 to 1,500 is normally like, um, to, uh, like a uh, threshold for me. Um, it's not that useful, but it's always interesting to see. And then I just have my power as well. Uh, and I believe that is it. Oh no, we've got the maps. So I often use maps, especially here, like I just, 
I don't really know any of the roads here. So I have this on, I just have kilometers to go, which is always nice, just like, sometimes it's not nice because you've got, realize you've got ages to go, but most of the time it's just quite reassuring to figure out, um, like, you know, how long you have to go and all the rest of it. And then just what, so that if I'm riding in zone two, I know I'm riding in zone two. So that's pretty useful. Um, and I do rate the mapping function here. As you can see, it's got the full maps, base maps and every single little tiny detail and every road on it automatically with the Wahoo. So anyway, there we go. Cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy what's on your Wahoo screen or Garmin screen or whatever sort of GPS unit you have. I really rate this, just does all the tricks. And um, I feel like it's quite important to have a very, I'd say the most important page is just this page here, which is my lap page, because then it means you can do laps properly and not guess about what power you're hitting. So anyway, cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.